Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for today's Cattle Industry Fund Public Meeting webinar. I'm Eleanor Anir, Assistant Director in Ag, Food and Wine in Persa, and I'll be chairing the session today. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands across the state on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are present today. Um, so I'm happy to now, if I could hand over to Casey, thanks, the Industry Advisor for Persa, to present an update on the Cattle Industry Fund Management Plan. Thanks. Thank you, Eleanor. Um, so the purpose of today's meeting is to prevent, present the revised Cattle Industry Fund Management Plan 21 to 2025-26. A copy of that plan is available now on the PERSA website um, with the, the link listed there. Meeting today, uh, we'll, I'll go through a little bit about the fund, um, then followed by a presentation and walking you through the management plan, um, and then there'll be some time for questions if there are any. So the Cattle Industry Fund is established under the Primary Industry Funding Schemes Act, um, which is an act that um, enables the establishment of schemes um, to collect funds for primary industry purposes and for other purposes. Um, the act sets high level requirements for the establishment of funds, um, contributions to funds, um, application of fund, uh, the management plan for the fund, which is what we're discussing today, and also um, annual reporting. In particular, the Act sets that the person administering the fund must make sure that management plans are prepared for the fund and that they're presented at public meetings. Um, and also that the management plans, uh, it also prescribes they must cover a five year period and be revised and presented at least once every 12 months. Uh, and it also actually outlines a bit about what they must contain, an estimate of contributions, proposals for the investment of the fund and proposals for the application of the fund and the industry members must be consulted during the preparation of the management plan. The fund itself is established by its own regulation. Uh, so there's actually, um, each fund is established by regulation. There's 15 funds established under the Act. Um, and I've got the uh, reference to the, to the Cattle Industry Fund regulations on the screen there. Uh, those regulations uh, give the fund its name. They set the fund administrator and state what the fund will consist of um, and in terms of contributions and interest and um, that sort of thing. They set the rules relating to contributions, refunds, um, and how the fund can be applied or what it can be used for. So just some specifics about the Cattle Industry Fund as a uh, summary of those regulations. The fund is administered by the minister. Um, the current contribution rate is $1.50 per permanent identification device or tag. Um, and that, that's for those tags that are purchased from an authorised manufacturer or recycler of um, devices. Uh, the contributions payable uh, by a person who purchases um, devices for cattle and um, that contribution is collected by collection agents who are the authorised manufacturers of those tags. Um, and they uh, collect the contribution from the producer um, or whoever's paying for the tags and um, then remit it into PERSA into the cattle industry, industry fund. So I'll move on to um, the presentation of the plan now and walk you through um, walk you through that. So the first um, the first section of the plan is actually there's an introduction and that covers off on many of the topics I've just um, just outlined about um, the the fundamentals of the fund. I'll move on to the estimate of contributions. Um, so the, um, this is something that does change every year. We update the contributions based on the latest data that we've got available. Um, so these um, estimates of um, device sales um, have been updated. They've actually been revised down a little bit um, and uh, starting at uh, around 500,000 devices and dropping to um, just under 450,000 devices by 25, 26. Now, I do want to stress that these uh, estimates only of device sales and um, also uh, they're based on our five year history of the tag sale data from the, the um, National Livestock Identification System, the NLIS. And we've used that to create a forecast. So um, there is a slight downward trend in those tag sales over the last five years, um, which has then been replicated, I guess, as we've forecasted that, that out over the five years, um, which is where the decrease is coming from. And um, just wanted to, that's all been done in consultation with um, Livestock SA and the Cattle Industry Fund Board um, in terms of revising those estimates and agreeing on them. Uh, they... 
Uh, and I do want to remind you that they updated every year. Um, so every year we um, revise that data and revise the estimates. So uh, the income in terms of the estimated income to the fund um, over the next five years, it's forecast to be around 760,000 in this financial year, dropping to around 670,000 by 25, 26. The next section of the fund um, addresses the investment of the fund. This is one of the parts required by the Act. Um, so, and this is a statement, standard statement um, for all of our funds that are established under the Act that PERSA administers the financial operations on behalf of the fund on behalf of the minister, and that's in accordance with the Cattle Industry Fund regulations and also with the Public Finance and Audit Act. Uh, contributions are invested in a separate interest bearing account at the Department of Treasury and Finance and the interest is paid monthly on the money is held and that interest is treated as income to the fund. The, um, that, there has been a minor change this year just to recognise that interest is paid monthly. Previously it was quarterly. Moving on to the purposes of the fund. So um, it's regulation 10 in the regulations that provides for the, um, how the fund can be applied by the minister. Um, there's no changes to this part of the plan this year and the <clears throat> management plan itself is a direct read of the regulations. So just to, um, to paraphrase and summarise that, um, the fund can be applied for the payment of compensation. Um, there is no compensation being, being paid at the moment. Um, the second application is um, essentially payments to um, a body that in the opinion of the minister represents cattle producers. Uh, then also there is um, the minister can apply the fund for other purposes for the benefit of the cattle of cattle producers uh, for the repayment of contributions or for refunds. Um, there's specific requirements relating to refunds outlined in uh, Regulation 7 of the Cattle Industry Fund. Um, and also it can be applied for the payment of expenses of administering the fund. I'll just highlight that um, the majority of funds um, for this financial year um, are paid out um, to a body that in the opinion of the Minister represents cattle producers and this year um, that was uh, Livestock SA, Livestock SA work in conjunction with, with SADA, um, the SA Dairy Farmers Association to represent cattle producers. The, this section of the management plan also um, outlines some investment priorities. So these have been um, identified with industry and also um, reinforced through the consultation that we did this year as well through the Cattle Industry Fund Board of Livestock SA. Uh, the um, investment priorities for the cattle industry fund are maintaining market access secure, and securing new markets. Uh, the second one is efficient and sustainable production. The third is business management and skills development. And the fourth being advocacy. Um, and you can see how the projects that are funded do align under those investment priorities and details about the projects that are funded are available um, via the PERSA website, but also on the um, in more detail on the Livestock SA um, pages. They've got pages for a page for the Cattle Industry Fund um, and outlining the projects and each of those um, projects aligns under one of those investment priorities. Uh, this there. Um, in terms of the, there's also eligible activities and ineligible activities. Really the eligible activities are um, just activities that comply with the regulations and the management plan. And um, they also outline, the management plan also outlines the criteria that projects are um, assessed against. If you're interested in that, you can have a look at more detail in, in the management plan itself. And it also outlines the ineligible activities, um, which are up there uh, um, on the screen in terms of things that won't be, won't be funded. Uh, the fund, there's a funding guidelines section. Now, this, um, these guidelines apply only to payments under Regulation 10.1b, and that's the regulation I highlighted earlier as being the payments to um, a body that represents cattle producers. So um, to be eligible, you have to be a body that, in the opinion of the Minister, represents cattle producers, and that's both beef and dairy cattle. Um, and the other um, main eligibility criteria is that as that organisation must be a legal entity. Uh, the management plan sets the application process. The main points from that are that an eligible organisation may request a payment from the fund each year via an application um, in May, and but that the minister may consider um, applications at other uh, for the funds at other times of the year if there are extenuating circumstances. Um, the uh, management plan also outlines the requirements um, for um, and the form of the application that's required by the minister and what's required to be in that application. 
The, in terms of the application approval, um, of the applications are assessed and approved by the Minister. Um, and if that is approved, it's um, the organisation is uh, expected to undertake the activities that are outlined in the application and also uh, post the details of any activities or projects that are funded on their website so that it's publicly available for contributors to view. Uh, their management um, plan has a, uh, information about the amount that's available for payment. Um, and the main, the key point is that the amount um, available for, pay for payment cannot exceed the fund balance. There are also, um, yeah, there's further information. There are some more specifics in the plan um, as well uh, around what needs to be taken into account when calculating how much is available. Um, and it also highlights um, that on um, that where possible and subject to seasonal val uh, variability in tag sales, um, that a closing balance of approximately one year of contribution is maintained in the fund and that just assists with managing very any variability in fund income. Um, it provides a reserve for industry to draw in, in order to um, respond to any unforeseen circumstances which may, um, and particularly for this fund, it may include a um, disease outbreak. You may have noticed, remembered earlier, there is provision in this fund um, to pay um, that the minister may pay compensation. If those compensation provisions uh, were to be um, enacted, there would need to be, you know, that's obviously um, would likely be an unforeseen circumstance. And um, then, yeah, so there's um, having a balance in the fund enables um, payments for that purpose if it was ever needed. And that, of course, would be done in consultation with industry. Um, and uh, also assists having that balance also assists in managing refund payments. Uh, the management plan outlines reporting requirements for a um, industry body. So there's a progress report due to the minister 31st of January and an annual report uh, 31st of July. And um, then finally, it also outlines payment terms. Now there's been yeah just a minor change to this uh, this in this revised plan. Um, it. Uh, the content of the plan now outlines that the payments made under Regulation 10.1b of the Cattle Industry Fund are GST exclusive. Um, and then also to assist with managing the GST um, exclusive nature of that payment, we have uh, shifted some of the, um, the payment schedule. So now 50% is payable in July. That's up from 40% last year. Um, October is a 30% payment and then February and April is a 10% payment of the, um, of the approved annual amount that the Minister has approved. And the final section of the fund uh, management plan deals with some more administrative matters. Uh, there's a paragraph around grievances outlining that concerns about the use of the fund may be raised in writing with the minister. Uh, that uh, it also sets a process um, for changing the contribution rate and um, outlines the process for updating the management plan. Uh, there's an annual schedule in there um, that we run through every year. Um, we aim to um, start the consultation in October. That normally happens yeah, towards the end of the calendar year. And then um, following through, the minister approves the plan and we hold the public meet, aim to hold the public meeting in March. We just missed March this year, but um, not by much. Um, and that is the end of the presentation of the plan. Um, now open it for any questions. Thanks, Casey. Um, just checking there's no questions and nothing in the chat box at the moment. No, no nothing's come through. <laughs> okay. um, right, so uh, I think that concludes our meeting. I'd like to um, thank you again for joining us for this public meeting today. Um, if you do have any questions or would prefer to ask questions directly to PERSA, please contact Casey via her email address that's on the screen now um, or via the website. There's contact details there as well. Um, and other than that, we just thank you for your time today and we wish you a safe and enjoyable Easter weekend. Thank you.